Good morning, everyone. It's our last full day, and the weather is gorgeous. We have driven over near Rutland. We're going to the maple syrup farm, but first, we're gonna have some breakfast. It probably includes maple syrup. your breakfast awesome. was it good was everybody's really happy wonderful. everybody's full you ready to go yes, you ready to go buy maple syrup now I've never had. I have never had. you're never happy <laughs> <laughs> you, his bacon wasn't crispy enough no, it wasn't. even it even though he asked for it crispy yeah. no there was just one little piece just one little piece okay it was good I ate it yeah. all right let's uh let's go find some maple syrup so we have arrived Baird Farms. Baird Farms. We found this oh, back right. in 2017. Mm -hmm. We had the hummingbird up yep. here. That's how I remember. It was 2017. <laughs> we saw a sign. And we just we followed, followed it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Meandered our way and yep. found it. And we've been coming here ever since. Yeah. So, well, let's go inside. All right. See how much of your money we can spend today. <laughs> <laughs> six years ago when we came here for the first time and things have really changed um, for the good but one of the things I just asked Jacob is I said are you still using that same bottling system to bottle and they are it's right here I think they can do four bottles at a time and they do hundreds if not thousands of bottles on that machine every year as someone who teaches marketing this is what really caught my attention the first time we came here. A lot of the maple syrup today is still sir sold in the same bottles they've been selling since probably the 50s. But what Jen and Jacob did was number one, they came up with a logo for their bottles as opposed to a generic bottle to try to bring maple syrup into the 21st century and get young people excited about it. And here you'll see they're doing things where it almost looks like bourbon bottles. And they're doing things like infusing. So this one is mint infused. Here's a birch bark infused. Here's a spruce tip infused. So lots of unique things that they're doing with maple syrup. And you can see by all these bottles, they do quite a business both here in the store and online. We came back here in 2015-ish. And the farm has changed a lot since then. We've doubled in size in terms of the amount that we produce. Added more trees that we boil in, and then we've also done a lot more retail. Half the sugar bush is, is what you're looking at across the way. Well, we left the maple syrup farm. We're on our way back, and we stopped here in Woodstock, Vermont. A uh, quaint little town. We're just gonna walk up here, maybe look at a couple shops, and there is a covered bridge here in town, so we're gonna go check that out. There's also a really cool church with a cool steeple and clock tower, and we may walk down that way too. by this church, its steeple with the clock. All right, now we're off to take a peek here at the Keechee Gorge. 
See, we do more than just eat. Yeah, we do. Yeah, people say all we do on vacation is eat, but yeah. the truth is. We're doing a lot of walking. Yeah. We've walked a lot of miles. Well, we've been doing stuff that I think maybe somebody might be interested yeah, in on video. Absolutely. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning, which means today's the day that we take Woody and Priscilla back to Cruise America, and then we'll take them to the airport, and they will head back to Texas. I can't believe 10 nights is over already. It's about 6 a.m. Our goal is to be on the road no later than 8 a.m. Uh, we've got to uh, stop and get a little gas for them. He's got to get his tanks emptied get to Cruise America, they'll probably have to do some kind of checkout process with a walk around. And, um, and then hopefully we have time, we're gonna go someplace and get a quick sandwich. And then they wanna be at the airport no later than one. So, it's sad, but so thankful, blessed and happy that we got to do this with my aunt and uncle. And I, I tell you what, I don't think this will be the last RV trip we take with them. I just have a feeling. Whether they rent an RV again, buy an RV, or maybe we just do like a cabin for them and we're at an RV park. But, you know, if, if you haven't traveled with your family, you need to. It's great. Um, we have had so much fun. Not only have we got to see a lot of cool stuff, I got to show them things that we love, but more importantly, just getting to share family stories, things like that. So, all right, get these yahoos, true and the best. Back up to the camper, I gotta start getting around. I think I know what this is, and it is. This is an advanced copy of the RV Destination Magazine's top um, destinations. This is a special edition, it's the first time they've ever done it, and this is gonna be coming out soon. We got an advanced copy so we could show you guys what it looks like. Now, if you're not familiar with RV Destination Magazine, this is the magazine dedicated to RVers, and it's high on content, low on advertising, and it features both the most popular RV destinations as well as some real hidden gems. Let's take a look inside of this one. And um, one of the things I love about RV Destinations Magazine is not only do they have great articles, but the photography is absolutely gorgeous. And so as we flip through here, like Valley of the Gods, and so this helps us as RVers kind of find where do we want to take our, our future trips this is absolutely wonderful. So, in the past, RV Destinations Magazine has been digital only, but I'm really excited to tell you that starting with their fall edition, it's gonna have a print option. So if you're one of those people that prefers a print version of a magazine, you now have three options when you subscribe. You can do a digital only, which will allow you to read the magazine on all of your devices. You can do a print only to where this will be mailed to you suitable for keeping on a coffee table or in the RV, or if you want both, they do have a combination subscription, you can get the digital and the print. So just go to rvdestinationsmagazine.com, check it out. You can even purchase back issues. So if you see an issue where you're like, man, I really would have liked to read about that location, don't worry, they got you covered. All right, let's take a look at their rental motor home, just so you know what it looks like. So right up front here, you can see it was a Ford chassis. So this was the driving area. And then up top, you can make this into a bed. Here we have a small dinette and a jackknife sofa. We got some cabinets up here, small microwave, vent hood, three burner stove, some more storage, actually a big sink. And over here is the refrigerator freezer. It's your Dometic uh, two-way propane electric. Uh, we'll start back here. Here's the bed. Now notice it's a like a vinyl cover because it's a rental. But this is what's really weird. It's supposed to be a walk around bed, but you can see basically you've got to just sit down and push yourself back into the bedroom area. So not real convenient from that standpoint. And uh, you can see this thing probably has seen its better day. Um, it's seven years old and then we'll look here and uh, so there's your toilet a little sink but um, take a look here kind of on a 
raised platform. And then on the opposite side, well, you can see it's a little tight in here, but I suppose that's the way motor homes are. This is the shower. So the shower is on the separate side. You do have the skylight to give you a little more room, but again, I don't know if you can see that. It's always hard filming in tight spaces. So there you go. There's a quick tour of the inside of the rental Cruise America. Now I should mention uh, on this rental some things that you know we normally take for granted on RVs were not present. Number one, there was no stabilizers and no way to not only stabilize but to level. Luckily we carry extra blocks and Anderson levelers but if you had rented this you would have no way to level it. Um, number two on the inside there was no television so if you have kids and TV is important to you. And just know, know that apparently they don't put TVs um, into these rentals. And another thing, and you'll notice right over here, there is no awning. It comes really empty. So they do have like a linen package you can rent on a, I think it was a per day option. We just brought linens from Indiana for them so they didn't have to rent that. They also do a kitchen package which gives you just real basic plates, silverware, some bowls. Things like that, but interestingly enough, in the kitchen packages, they don't give you a coffee maker. You get a tea kettle, but no coffee maker, and you know, I could never survive without a coffee maker. So, just a few things to keep in mind if you're renting one. And if you want to know more about their whole rental process and how it went, things like that, you can check out a complete interview we did with them about renting from Cruise America on our podcast, Travels with Delaney, the podcast, which you can find on all major podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, Pandora, wherever you listen to your podcast, check it out so you can learn more about renting.